Hey, good to see everybody. It is April. April good morning. Uh, John, then I've already had two pranks pulled on me. Katie just came in, slipped me a note, said we had a flat tire and I had to run her to work. And I said, well, Jonathan <laughs> and Reverend Barber are going to have to take it from here. But then she uh, <laughs> saw her laughing out there. It's uh, April Fool's Day, but more importantly, it's keeping it, you on your toes. It is uh, the month that we get to spend some time praying together. We're going to spend some time with Reverend Barber in conversation and prayer in just a minute. Uh, just to give you a, a little bit of a heads up while folks are joining us, uh, a few things on the horizon. And Jonathan, uh, you feel free to jump in here. There's a, there's a bunch of stuff happening right now. It's, it's, there's a lot of things moving at the same time. So this weekend, Red Letter Christians has been one of the sponsors of a gathering at Riverside Church on the anniversary of Dr. King's uh, famous, uh, beautiful speech, uh, Beyond Vietnam, uh, Time to Break the Silence. And we're going to read that speech and reflect on it. Dr. Bernice King, his daughter will be there and all kinds of folks. So join us in New York if you can. Reverend Liz Theo Harris will be there. We're going to have all kinds of friends and uh, some good music. We'll live stream it starting at four o'clock Eastern time. So that's happening tomorrow. And then uh, Monday is the anniversary of Dr. King's assassination. So we'll, we'll probably all do be doing different ways to remember him and to continue his legacy. I'll be joining uh, the King Center and Dr. Corn Cornell West as we talk about the triplets of evil. Uh, so that's happening on Monday. Uh, I think a lot of you know that we've got these really beautiful images that were painted by powerful images of Jesus's execution that um, these stations of the cross have been painted by men who are themselves condemned to die, who are living on death row. And uh, we've done several pieces around that. If you want to get them for your community uh, this year or next year for, for the Lent and Easter season, we can help you do that. We're also going to have those images at Riverside. We're going to have them in Tennessee on Easter Sunday, because sadly, this is what's happening, is there are executions planned literally a few days after Easter. Uh, the, the latest reminder that many of us have kind of missed the whole point of Jesus's death and resurrection. So we're going to have an Easter service in Tennessee where one of those executions is planned uh, at the Capitol at four, four o'clock on Easter Sunday. We're also going to walk nine miles from death row to the Capitol. So keep an eye on all that, the March for Mercy. Uh, and then this month, uh, our book club book is When Everything's on Fire from Brian Zahn. And he's a good brother. He's going to join me at the end of the month as we talk about his writing. Uh, and just to give you another, another uh, heads up, next month, we're going to do this beautiful compilation book uh, that Liz Theo Harris, Reverend Liz Theo Harris put together called We Cry Justice. And Jonathan, you're reading it now. Tell everybody just a little bit more about it so they can go ahead and get it. Oh, it's a beautiful collection of voices from the Poor People's Campaign reflecting on the scriptures and the good news for the poor that Jesus preached, uh, which is good news for all of us, and a good day to mention it because we have, as our special guest today, the other co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign, Bishop William Barber, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna dive into conversation here in a little bit. While, while we're on upcoming events, uh, you've already highlighted April four. It's an important day in history. It's also an important day this year. The Poor People's Campaign will be releasing a new study on the impact that poverty has had on people uh, and on this country really during COVID. So mm -hmm. um, uh, that that release and a, a live stream of that will be available at poorpeoplescampaign.org on Monday morning, April 4th. It's great. And we're, uh, we're always moving together, but particularly this season, we're going to be building momentum to the, the June March on Washington, June 18th. And uh, so we'll talk about all that. But Let's dive right in. Let's center ourselves. And this month, uh, we, we're remembering some amazing folks. We are remembering Dr. King on the 4th, the anniversary of his assassination. This month, we also remember uh, the Rwandan genocide, where nearly a million people were killed in a, a hundred days. And uh, we remember Bonhoeffer. We remember William Booth. We remember the first recognized Native American saint, uh, Kateri Tikakwitha. We remember 
the first Earth Day this month. Uh, it's Earth Day, and the first one, 20 million people showed up <laughs> in 1970. So that, that's this month. We also remember Cesar Chavez, who died uh, on April 23rd, 1993. Uh, you, you, you'll see all the dates, but this is April and we're so glad you can join us. We got folks usually all, all over the, the planet that are joining together in prayer. And we're so glad you could be here, especially as we talk in just a little bit with Reverend Barber. So Jonathan, let's, uh, let's do it, my brother. It's great to be with let's, you, man. Let us pray. If you don't have a printed copy, you can find it online, commonprayer.net or uh, in the app store on your phones. Um, this is April 1st. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Come let, us let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. We are marching in the light of God. 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 We are marching, we are marching, we are marching in the light of God. We are marching, we are marching, we are marching in the light of God. Our delight is in the law of love. May we walk in Christ's light day and night. And this is from the first psalm. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked is doomed. Our delight is in the law of love. May we walk in Christ's light day and night. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Exodus chapter 14. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, the minds of Pharaoh and his officials were changed toward the people. And they said, what have we done letting Israel leave our service? So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers all over all of them. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the Israelites who were going out boldly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, his chariot drivers and his army, they overtook them camped by the sea by Pi Haharoth in front of Baal Zephon. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you've taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you. And you have only to keep still. Mm. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. 
And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his chariot drivers. The angel of God who was going before the Israelite army moved and went behind them, and the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Our delight is in the law of love. May we walk in Christ's light day and night. And this is our uh, quote for the day from Garrison Keillor, American humorist. He said, some people think it is difficult to be a Christian and to laugh, but I think it's the other way around. God writes a lot of comedy. It's just that God has so many bad actors. All right. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's uh, good to be together this morning, and we're delighted to be with our brother, Bishop William Barber, who is here, uh, he's here on April Fool's Day. Uh, you probably know him as a champion of justice. He is also, by God's grace, a, a brother with a good sense of humor. So April Fool's, not a bad day to, to have you with us, Bishop. Uh, good morning and welcome to Common Prayer. Well, first of all, let me thank you and Shane and, and for that time of meditation. And uh, you're right, we ain't fooling around. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, a long time ago, when I was coming up in the church, the old preacher would say, if you're going to be a fool, make sure you be a fool for the Lord. <laughs> so, so I'm trying, it might seem foolish that we believe that a remnant of people in this country from among the 140 million poor and low wealth people can come together and build coalitions across all these lines that have been paid for to divide us mm -hmm. and can have a mass poor people's low wage workers assembly tomorrow march on Washington to the polls and to, and, and to the polls when people keep saying uh, you can't put folk together from Alabama and Appalachia but I hear my ear, if you're going to be a fool, <laughs> be a fool for the law. And it might seem strange that we uh, are, are, are not, you know, we, we don't just do this because of who's in office, but we believe that we can end the reality of 87 million people being uninsured and uninsured and, and uh, constant attacks uh, on democracy through voter suppression and undermining uh, our Latino and immigrant Haitian brothers and sisters because we don't have immigrant justice and putting people on reservations and still treating them and making them live under laws from the 19th century. And, and uh, we can challenge this economic just, inju ecological uh, injustice and this war economy that is so wealthy, Jonathan and Shane, and so greedy that one contract from one military uh, contract that could provide health care for every state that has denied Medicaid expansion. It might seem that with the, mm -hmm. United, the, um, the um, uh, United States Chamber of Commerce funding, you know, so much of the pushback against living wages and voting rights and all the money they have and all the power they think they have and all of the resources they think they have. And, and here we are talking about poor and low wealth folk and be, can build a stage and build a voice and, and through their moral voice and putting their bodies on the line and through their love and through their speaking truth and that they can take on uh, the wealthiest nation in the world and people who are constantly trying to grab power so they can control the $21 trillion gross domestic product and the war economy. 
But I hear that old preacher saying, if you're going to be a fool, <laughs> be a fool for the Lord. For the Lord. <laughs> you know, I was thinking when you when we were reading that text, when we were reading that text from Exodus, that um, when they got out there up against the sea, it was mm. the people that were calling Moses a fool. <laughs> you That's know? right. Why did you bring us out here? Couldn't you? Couldn't they have buried us back in Egypt? And uh, it, it 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 reminded me that Brother Charles Blow over to New York Times a few weeks ago called you our Moses. He oh, said Lord. you're the Moses for our time now. I know you don't want to carry that on your own, and we're not going to let you. That you know, there's a lot of folks who need to lead us on out the way. However, <clears throat> having been in that position, I imagine you've been called a fool. Well, uh, just time or two. So how do you keep your center? How do you keep yourself centered when folks, even the folks you're trying to lead sometimes say, I'm not sure this is possible. You trying to get us killed? Yeah. Well, uh, yes, <laughs> but not <laughs> killed physically. But, you know, the first mm -hmm. thing that has to die is ourselves mm -hmm. and our own fears. Even Jesus said that we have to die daily to, 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 to the fear of, the powers that be die daily to our own feelings of inadequacy. And, you know, for a minute there, Moses thought he was a fool because he, he mm -hmm. a couple of times the folk got to him. You know, people forget when when the people called Moses, why you bring us out here? It was Moses that said, uh, stand still and mm -hmm. see the salvation in God. And it's almost like God said, now, Moses, are you really going to be the wrong kind of fool? I didn't tell you to stand still. I didn't tell you, stop listening to those folk. I told you to stretch out what's in your hand. And part of what we have to do at this moment is to see what's in our hand. You know, I gave mm -hmm. the other side, but the other side is poor people now make up 43% of the country. Mm -hmm. if, that, if they are mobilized, that's a powerful moral force. They, they now represent 32% of the electorate. It's a powerful moral force. Uh, you know, the, the things we're asking for and demanding are not begging, but they're trying to save the democracy. Do you know, Jonathan, there is a, there's a wrong kind of foolishness. It's a foolishness for money and greed is kind of mm -hmm. what the psalmist said in that text. You live in the council of the wicked. Now, you know, Isaiah 58 talks about Loosen the bands of wickedness, which means pay people what they deserve and stop for exploitation in the, in the uh, workplace. So, yeah. you know, the nation is foolish in the wrong way. We mm -hmm. lose a trillion dollars a year just because we won't deal with child poverty. We mm -hmm. blocked this year nearly $400 uh, billion dollars going into the economy because we two senators, one from Arizona and one from uh, West Virginia, both who claim to be people of faith, that's another issue, uh, uh, blocked living wages and kept 41% of African Americans in poverty and, and over 31 million Americans. That, that is another kind of foolishness. And that's not being a fool for Christ. Uh, that's being mm -hmm. a fool for greed. And the reality is being a fool for Christ is actually the wisest thing you can do because poverty and low wealth from the bottom up, it, it would not only be constitutional, you know, to, to not do it is constitutionally inconsistent, it's morally indefensible, it's politically insensitive, and here's the kicker, it's economically sane, mm. insane, insane, right? Mm. So what we're trying to do in this, this America saying, Stop being insane. It's all right to be a fool for Christ, but it's crazy to be insane and hurt yourself, right? Mm. That makes no sense at all. And so I think that um, there are times that you, you keep going by knowing the other side, knowing the dangers, mm. hanging out with some good fools for Christ will keep you, keep you focused. You know, a whole lot of them you can hang out with Moses, Amos, Isaiah, Harriet Tubman, uh, <laughs> Frederick Douglass, Jonathan Hartgrove, Shane, uh, Liz, I mean, it's quite a few of them, you know, uh, uh, Cornel West, Bernice King. I mean, you know, you're in pretty good company. 
<laughs> and, and that's what we're really doing is we're calling folk together. You know, this gathering on June 18th is Mass Poor People's Low Wage Workers Assembly and Moral March on Washington to the polls is a calling. It's not a day. It's a declaration. It's mm -hmm. saying, wake up, America. Look at yourself. Because, you know, the, the first two hours is really going to be people, impact the people. We're going to make the nation see itself. And the reason is because God told Amos in Amos chapter 5, when, 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 when um, injustice is epidemic, and when so many people in power don't want to hear the truth, and when people are throwing up their hands and our oh, protest is useless, there's nothing can happen. You've got to find a remnant of fools for Christ. God says mm -hmm. you've got to, I, I don't need everybody. God, I need a remnant of people who will, who will literally work things out in the public square, who will go into the street, shut down the factories, shut down the schools and everything and will hmm. lament, cry. I mean, just like they lost it, they will just wail and say, not on our watch, not now, not without a cry from us. And then God says, only then will I come and visit you and help you out. But you've got to act as though something is wrong. And I was thinking lastly that Zora Neale Hurston, who was that great prophetess of the Harlem Renaissance, once hmm. said to her friends, if you smile when people are hurting you, they will kill you and say you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And we can't be quiet. Jesus wasn't even quiet, quiet on the cross. Mm -hmm. So there's no way we can be quiet, quiet when, when this system's today. And, you know, we're turning out a report, Jonathan, on Monday, this whole weekend, you know, we're preaching at National City Church. We're dedicating the space on Pennsylvania Avenue. That's where we'll be on the 18th. And, but then on Monday, we're releasing a report. And, and I've been crying till I got righteously angry the other mm. day. That report says that the COVID-19, and Shane, watch this, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, was four to five times unnecessarily deadly to the poor. Mm, mm. I notice the words I'm saying, unnecessarily deadly to the poor. So there are forces that let this pandemic feed mm. on the poor. Uh, and, 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 and you could, do, and, and some of the research actually showed, I can't say it all because it's embargo, but actually shows that in some places, a hundred dollar increase in money could be could, could has a correlation to whether you live or whether you die. Mm -hmm. Now we would be foolish for real, and the wrong way not to stand up and challenge this. And this report, as as this made me, you know, weak man because mm -hmm. I mean it's gonna un it's stuff I never wanted to have to say to America. Never want hope when we even commissioned it was hoping that we wouldn't find. But it's almost like the things that we feared the most have now come upon us. And the only way we can turn it is for all of us who are foolish enough to believe that God is still on the throne, that truth is still real, that love is still powerful, that mercy is still a necessity, and that we can make a difference for us to bring our foolish selves together and, and, and stand up in this moment uh, and cry and cry justice. I was thinking of uh, uh, that, you know, as we remember Dr. King and think of all the, the, the facts that you're releasing this week in that study. Uh, when Dr. King said, you know, they threw an insult to him that he was maladjusted and he took it as a compliment. And he said, uh, you know, maybe we've become way too adjusted uh, yeah. to injustice and to inequity. And uh, there's some things we, we don't want to be adjusted to. And, you know, I think for some folks, it's uh, something that that we, we don't think as much about it as we should, that, you know, less than 100 people own the same amount as half the world's population, that we're spending all this money on military. The, the Pentagon in three seconds spends more money than the average American makes in a year. Yep. And you think, what, what's foolish here? You know, is it like, why do we need 100,000 Hiroshima bombs? Uh, right. You know, what, what, what really... Uh, uh, is sensible 
And, you know, as, as yeah. you're, you're looking at that study, Jonathan, you've been doing a lot of work on that too. Um, you mentioned a little bit, I know some of it's embargo, but some other things that, that jump out that we, we want to be maladjusted to. Well, certainly, I mean, there, there are stories behind, you know, these numbers. And those are the stories that um, people have been sharing in the Poor People's Campaign week after week. For those who don't know, the campaign is having a tour around the country. It may be coming to your town soon. Mm -hmm. So uh, go to poorpeoplescampaign.org and uh, go ahead and register to be with us on June 18th. And you can also learn when the tour is going. It was just in North Carolina, where, where I am uh, on Monday, this past Monday. And uh, we heard, the thing that struck me as I listened, you know, the, the reality of what poverty looks like is that uh, several of the people who shared were under 30 and are um, uh, tech workers. Um, I think this is a huge shift in the economy and why a lot of young people are realizing that they really need to connect with this campaign because mm -hmm. there are young people who are really skilled laborers. They, you know, they, they understand technology. They, they work for Google, they work for Amazon, you know, but they're contract workers and um, they're not able to earn enough to survive in these rental markets and, you know, with the cost of living in places where they are. So when you listen to the, you know, reality of so many people, I think what we realize is that there really is a, a labor crisis in this country. And uh, there is a, a, a new labor movement that's emerging. So that, this, that's why this is a poor people's and a low wage workers assembly that's coming mm -hmm. together. And frankly, I'm quite inspired by labor these days because what I hear people uh, in, in organized labor saying sounds to me a lot like what Jesus said, a lot like what the prophet said about uh, the need for economic justice so that all of us can be well. So that's what comes through to me in this report, these personal stories of people who are really crying out because they know the nation is sick. Mm. Yeah, and you know, Jonathan, you're right. And, and, and people came, if you saw that Monday in North Carolina, people came out, they might be dressed well, but they are under tremendous you know, economic pressure. They are mm -hmm. making a connection that, for instance, things like voter suppression are not just black issues, but uh, they're making a connection. Why is the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, for instance, uh, and the, and the prof military profiteers many times, the main ones trying to block living wages, health care, and voting rights? It can't mm -hmm. be just that it's about black people alone. It's not Jim Crow. It's more James Crow Esquire. It's an attempt to create a situation where we can't be a fusion coalition, can't vote people out of office. Politics are determined before people even vote. But it's all about controlling the, 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 the wealth and the, and the power of the nation, which is to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That's what Psalm said. And I think, you know, when you sang walking in the light of God, you sang that this morning, walking, we're marching in the light of God. We march in that light of love and that light of truth, but we also have to put a light on it because to walk in the light of God means you're carrying a cross, but you're carrying it publicly because mm -hmm. part of the public carrying of the cross is to break the heart and the conscience of the, those that see it wide open. You know, it was only when Jesus was on the cross that that centurion who worked for the military industrial complex said, truly this must be the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. So people are now willing to put on their crosses and expose what maybe a few years ago they would have hidden. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, young girl who lost 23 members of her family from COVID in a 23 mile, a 30 mile radius is going, is marching, is organizing, going to be mm -hmm. speaking. But now we know that that was an anomaly. Uh, what we know is that COVID didn't discriminate, but our government systems did. What we know now is from this report uh, is that, it, and, and this discrimination, this refusal to track poverty and low wealth, this refusal to ask the question, if we make people essential workers and then send them into work to take care of the rest of us without them having the necessary protection, what is that going to do to their lives? Well, we know what it did now. Mm -hmm. It put people in higher places of death while they were trying so-called to help the rest of us 
or live. And it's and and, and here's the thing. It did not have to be. I mean, what mm. the report really is showing is whether it's Mingo County in West Virginia, where that senator has turned his back on uh, uh, the people, poor people there, or Harrison County, uh, uh, Texas, down in Houston, or the reservation, or in North Carolina, uh, Wayne County in a, in a tier one. None of these realities had to exist. You actually could have done both. You could have had people that needed to keep working work, but protected them and and made sure that they had everything necessary. Instead, something other than that happened. And I think in one of the one of the um, uh, 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 ways, Jonathan Shane, the, the poor people died six times higher mm. in poor community, mm. six times higher. So it's almost like you put poor and low wealth people right in the war zone, right in the in, in the middle and, and and let the pandemic just feed on them. Mm. Uh, and 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 so people, as one lady said to me, when I get up in the morning, I feel like I'm walking dead or walking into my death. Mm. Well, we would be the wrong kind of fools not mm. to expose and challenge it. And not just to curse the darkness, but to, mm. to, 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 to demand change and, and not just change. We can't bring those folk back that died, but mm. we surely can stand in their memory and try to do things that keep this from ever uh, happening again and to force the kind of system change. But you know, there's one other thing, Jonathan, and I, I say this to you and Shane, you know, and I've had to come to this conclusion about one of the things about being a fool for Christ. And again, you can go to poorpeoplescampaign.org and get information, go to www breach repairs and get information and sign up for buses and all those things. That's just a little infomercial. But I have um, been reading Ezekiel mm. and uh, um, you know, where, where God tells him to stand up and then mm -hmm. he says, I need you to go speak to these folk. And, and, and one of the most startling things is where he says, uh, uh, they may not listen. You know, mm -hmm. Martin wrestled with that, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he was mm -hmm. talking love and poverty and they shot him. He's, and, 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 and not just him, but the movement. But then God says, but at least they will know mm -hmm. there has been a prophet. Let me translate that down on April 1st. At least they will know there's a fool for the law. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh. and, and if we can get a whole lot of us, at least they will know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and then if you go long enough, you might mess around being a fool for Christ, find a valley of potential fools for the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you might be able to preach to them. Oh, glory, I feel yeah, something. Yep. Yeah. You might be able to preach to them. And if you preach to them, they might stand up and come together. Mm -hmm. And some spirit might get on them. And, and then you might be able to say like that old preacher to that whole valley, if you're going to be a fool, be a fool for the Lord. And they just might take you up on it. And then the very ones that have been discarded, this thing destroyed, mm. might have a moral re resurrection and become the hope of the, of the world and the hope of the nation. But that's not going to happen mm. unless you have enough Ezekiels and Jonathans and Shanes and Liz's who are foolish enough to go preaching in a valley of dry bone. Mm, glory. Ooh. Reverend Barbara, I just want to ask you, I'm telling you, we're getting some fire this morning. I wanted to, uh, one last question I wanted to ask you, Jonathan and I, you know, we, we have these reflections that we put together in each month on the common prayer. And this month we, we reflect on the church and how it's hard to be Christian without the church, that we need this cloud of witnesses of holy fools and good troublemakers, uh, the company that we're in. And uh, I think a Dr. King saying the church isn't meant to be the servant of the state or the master of the state, but the conscience of the state. That's right. And I wonder if you you share about, you know, what role you think the church plays. And I, I know you're, you know, Greenleaf, I've been there, your, your, your community is important to you and, um, and, and the church is important to this movement, you know, and I, I wanted to yeah. hear your, your thoughts on church. Well, let me say, I'm thankful to God for all of the 2,500 you know, peak members of the prophetic council that we now have um, right. across, across this nation, um, those who are, are engaged, those who are standing. 
but as a bishop now in the church and as uh, one called to, um, you know, defend the faith, if you will. And I remember when Bishop Flunder placed mm. on me um, my, my, my attire and said, this is not about dress up. Uh, this in some way is clothing you for a burial. And she said, the cassock is, has 33 buttons and you, it's put on and you're not supposed to get a, a, able to get out of it. The other piece was a symbol of the Holy Spirit. The other piece was a prophet, prophet's vest. And then she put this ring on me. She said, this ain't about cuteness. It's a purple, but it's to remind you uh, and to say to you every time you look at it that if death comes because you stand for what's right, then so be it. Now, I'm not saying that in the morbid sense, nor in the arrogant sense, but I want I, I need to preface it. That's because I'm going to say something that some may not want to hear. I think the greatest thing the church can do right now is repent for our mm -hmm. apathy. I mean, half of what's going on in this country right now is because, for instance, the Pew study did a study some years ago of 50,000 sermons, mm -hmm. 50,000 sermons couple of years ago. And in those sermons, they looked for the themes that came up. Now, Jesus started out talking about the poor. He ended talking about the least of these and the poor. You and I know there are nearly 2,500 scriptures in the Bible about how we treat the least of these, the poor, and those in the margin. The only, the second greatest, the, the, the first, only sin greater than that is the sin of idolatry. And yet this, this the poverty and injustice did not register 1% of the sermon things in this country. Now, they weren't looking at the world as probably similar, but in the country. Think about that now. Jesus, who we claim we follow, started out, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach good news to the poor. Everywhere from, from Bethlehem to Capernaum to Calvary, he was dealing with the least of these. And every action he did was a, was a direct challenge to the systems of Rome and oppression and, and, and whatnot. And then he, he heads toward the cross and he starts talking about woe unto those who do all this tithing, but you leave undone justice. And he talks mm -hmm. about every nation is going to be judged. That's what he's preaching from start to finish. And yet in the American pulpit, Poverty doesn't even register. You hear what I'm saying, Shane? It, not that, it, that it's 10% of the sermon. It doesn't register. Mm -hmm. In the African-American church, the word hallelujah registered, but poverty didn't. Lord have mercy. Help us. Mm -hmm. I think that June 18th ought to be, for a lot of places, a place to come and lament and repent. Mm -hmm. Not just for the nation, but what we have allowed the nation. And, and I'm going to tell you something, this, 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 and we talk a lot about Martin, but Coretta said something that if you hear it, and Bernice and I were talking about it one day, was even more prophetic in some ways than what Dr. King said. When he had been shot, somebody asked her, well, tell, tell us what you feel about violence and death and murder. And she said, well, Killing my husband is not the only kind of violence. She said, denying people health care is violence. Mm. Denying people education is violence. Denying workers the wages and labor rights is violence. But then she said, and she said, and even an apathetic attitude that refuses to address these other forms of violence is a sinister form of violence. Mm. That's what mm. she said. And, you know, I was quoting a guy from the 18th century, the other, 19th century the other day, John and I were talking about him, where he said, what do you do with the sin of social murder that is just as bad as, as premeditated murder by a person, but it's not done by a person, it's, it's done by systems, and mostly the systems of omission." That all this stuff we see today is not just what the U.S. Chamber of Commerce or some, some extremist politician commits. Mm. A lot of it is happening because of our omission. 
And, and, and so I think the church, I don't know everything that metanoia is going to do, but I know everything about our faith has to start there mm. with repentance. You got to be mm. foolish enough to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, mm. and I'm going to do better. So hopefully mm. this June 18th, folk will come and nominations and churches and everybody with sackcloth of ashes for how how quietly and how comfortable we have come mm. with other people's demise. And literally, if they're dying, we are dying too. Well, that's an altar call this morning. Yes, Lord. And, uh, we respond. Uh, we respond by how we live. Mm. So uh, let's let's join ourselves in prayer together with a commitment to uh, also join our hands and our feet in uh, in joining the poor people who are indeed an army rising up and who are leading us toward. Uh, repentance as a way toward freedom. And John, uh, we, may I say one one quick with what sentence? Can, would you all mind if I lift up uh, a Jewish since Jesus was Jewish too, with one Jewish brother? And, and I want to hear it. Rabbi Heschel mm -hmm. wrote a letter to John Kennedy mm -hmm. just before the march on Washington and said, Mr. President, we forfeit the right as a nation to worship God. Mm. until we do right by the Negro. I want to update that. We mm. forfeit the right to worship God if we don't do right by the poor and low wealth brothers and sisters in this nation. 700 of whom die, were dying every day from poverty and low wealth before COVID. Mm. Seven people died from vaping, and there were congressional hearings and presidential meetings. Mm. 700 people dying a day from poverty, low wealth. Mm. There is yet to be one presidential debate in the election on how we're going to address it, and one White House meeting, and one full congressional hearing. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Mm. Mm. Well, let's thank you, Bishop. Together. Yes, thank you indeed. Let's uh, love you all. Take care. Love you too. Love you. Let's pray together in the words that the Lord taught us with a spirit of penance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You who led Israel through the waters, plant us by streams of living water. Root us in your love and grow us up to bear the fruit of your spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And we might just add, and holy foolishness. Yes, indeed. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us. Bye now.